How's it going everyone? CJ from On The Grow here and today I'm going to be sharing how we grow red garnet amaranth hydroponically from seed to harvest. So stay tuned for that. Okay, so I'm really excited about this because red garden and amaranth is such a fun crop to grow. So let's quickly talk about all the supplies I'll need. So Mandy, if you'd come over here. So the first thing that you're gonna need, obviously, is going to be your seed. We use the red garnet amaranth that is organic from True Leaf Market. This seed has done really, really well for us. The next thing you're gonna need is some kind of way of measuring out your seed. We use both a scale, a cup to put the seed into, and we also use um, teaspoons and measuring spoons so that you guys have a better reference if you don't have a scale available. All right, so you'll also need some trays to grow this in. So I've already got these kind of stacked out in order. So the very bottom tray is going to be a no hold 1020 tray. This is what you're gonna be pouring your nutrient liquid into for the hydroponic grow. And that's gonna act as your bottom watering reservoir. Whenever you water this, what happens is you're gonna put your next tray on top of it, which is a meshed 1020 tray. The reason we like to use a mesh tray is because this provides a lot of room for the roots to grow through very easily down into the bottom reservoir. And then the third tray is going to be just like your bottom tray. This is going to be a no hold 1020 tray. This is serving to help with the germination process. What it does is it traps the humidity and uh, also puts a little bit of weight on top of the plant so that they're able to push their seed, seed holes off onto it. So let's kind of get started on this. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to need a hydroponic grow medium. For this experiment, we're gonna be using hemp. There are a lot of different grow mediums. There is like burlap, there's bio straight, uh, there's jute, there's hemp like we have here, and quite a few others, there's cocoa mats, and I mean, you just kinda of name it, uh, there's grow mediums for it. Uh, we prefer the hemp because we found that with red garden amaranth, it for some reason provides a huge boost to the growth. I'm not sure if it's just like the right pH for it or what the conditions are, but something is perfect about hemp for us in our space to be growing red garden amaranth. So that's what we're gonna be using because we have a lot of different grow mediums available. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your grow medium and you're gonna put it on top of your mesh tray. So I'm just gonna set this hemp down in here and I'm gonna kind of push in the corners a little bit and make sure this is seated nicely within our tray. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and measure out our seeds. So I'm gonna turn on my scale and I left my cup on top so that everything zeroes out correctly. Put my bag of seeds here and it should be, the amount that we like to use is about one tablespoon that is just filled slightly over the top. Usually it's about 15 grams, this is 15.7, that's close enough, that's what we'll be using for this grow. So before we actually spread the seeds onto this grow medium, what I like to do is actually mist the medium because if you try to put dry seeds on dry medium, the seeds just bounce everywhere. But if you add a little bit of moisture to it, it helps those seeds kind of stick whenever they hit the medium. So Mandy, if you wouldn't mind, would you hand me the spray bottle that's over there next to you? The Thank you so much. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take a spray bottle and this is just normal filtered water in the spray bottle. There isn't anything special done to this. We just filter it. I think the pH on the spray water is um, like 8.0 or something like that. So I noticed this sprayer is also messing up a little bit. So oh, there we go, fixed itself. Okay, you can see that I've got the medium wet, but it's not like saturated yet. So now watch, whenever I try to seed this, I'm just gonna take my seed here. You have to be a little bit careful because if your seed is the same color as your grow medium, it's a little bit harder to see, but I'm just gonna do my best to evenly spread this out as best as I can. You can see that whenever it kind of hits the grow medium, it doesn't bounce around a whole lot. It actually sticks quite well. And that's because we added that little bit of moisture for it to kind of grab onto. So what you're trying to do here is avoid clumping. Cause if you clump things up, you're more likely to get disease in a spot and that disease is gonna spread to the rest of your crops if you don't take care of it. I prefer to actually seed with my hands because I've just done it so often 
that it feels the most comfortable to me. People like to use seed shakers because they feel they get it more even. Personally, I love using my hands. Uh, it just works better for me. But also, if you use your hands, make sure that you have them washed. And that just kind of goes with general sanitation practices. You know, do your best to keep your space clean, your trays clean, and your hands clean whenever you handle this product. Okay, so you can see that I did my best to get that pretty even. And now that it's on there, what you want to do is be careful with these spray bottles because sometimes if you have a very powerful spray nozzle, whenever you go to mist it the first time, you're actually going to scatter your seeds a little bit. So what I like to do is start high, get a little bit of moisture on them, and then once they start to kind of grab down into that medium more, then I just slowly work my way closer and closer as I mist them. Now the goal here is to get it wet, but not overly saturated. Like I don't want this dripping down into the bottom tray but I do want this wet enough that it's gonna stay moist and allow that humidity to help with germination overnight. Okay, so that honestly looks pretty good. My corners could probably use a touch more. Corners and the sides are usually gonna be the ones that dry out first. So a little bit of extra on the sides and corners would not hurt at all. Okay, so that looks really good. So now we're basically done with the whole uh, seeding process. What I'm gonna do now is just take my top tray. I'm gonna make sure with your grow medium, sometimes it tries to hold it up. I like to have a actual contact onto the tray below it. So I do my best to kind of push down that medium and really make sure this is as seeded, seated down <laughs> as best as it can. Okay, so now we've got all our trays here. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and then I'm just gonna stick it onto our shelf where it's just gonna remain there for a few days and I'll be doing a day-by-day -day update on this and we'll do it all the way to the very end until harvest, so I'll see you tomorrow. All right, so we are on day two of this Red Garnet Amaranth Hydroponic Grow and what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna pull out this tray and we're gonna check on it and make sure it doesn't need water or anything. So I'm gonna pull off the top cover right here. You'll see that a few seeds just kinda of stick sometimes. That's all right, you can tap it off. And if not, we'll just kind of knock these off on the last day if they don't end up falling back into the medium and germinating. So you, it's hard to tell with uh, amaranth, but you can see that little white ring that happens around the seed, that's actually the um, seed starting. I believe that is actually the radical itself getting ready to push out. So I can see that everything is germinating nice and evenly. Um, the medium is still kind of moist, which is good because I still want this to have a little bit of moisture. Uh, by the time I get back to it, I don't want this to dry out too much. So what I'm going to do now is just hit it with a light mist. That should be good. And I'm also going to add a little bit of hydrogen peroxide. So I did one liter of water with two tablespoons of hydrogen peroxide. Uh, just because amaranths can be susceptible to like um, damping off and other pathogens. So just a little bit of hydrogen peroxide goes a long way. Uh, it also helps with germination a little bit, we believe. So that is it for the day. What I'm going to do real quick, just out of curiosity, is check and see if any roots are making it through. So far, there's nothing. This is actually just the little medium itself. There's no any kind of roots coming through just yet. So we're good there. I don't need to be adding water to the bottom yet. So all I'm going to do is put my top lid back on and set it back onto the shelf. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out tonight and I'm going to redo that same process. I'm going to see if it needs water and add water as needed through misting. So I will see you tomorrow. All right, so it is the morning of day three for the Red Garnet Amaranth Grow. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull this out. We're going to take a peek here at our amaranth. So you can see we got rid of most of these ones that were sticking to the top. And since it's now day three, what I'm going to do, anything else that's kind of sticking, I'm actually gonna knock off. I'm gonna grab a towel real quick so I can do this more sanitarily. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna wipe all that off. Because if it's still stuck to the top and it's germinated, that means the radical is not driving down into the medium, so I don't want that seed to stick around anymore. So you can see that our little radicals are poking down into the grow medium. Those are the little um, white roots that you see right there. And the radical is the first root that comes out of the plant. So everything is looking good. The medium's still a little bit moist, which is nice. So I'm just going to give it a nice light watering and then we'll put it back on the shelf. Again, we're just going to just do a single pass over with that. And that's that. So now I'm just going to put the 
lid right back onto this. Press it down just a touch, make sure we're touching. Take this and then stick it back onto our shelf. So that's it. So I'm gonna come out tonight. I'm gonna double check it, make sure it's still moist. Give it some water if it needs some water and I will see you tomorrow. All right, so it is day four of the Red Garnet Amaranth Grow. So let's pull this off the shelf and check out how everything is looking. So I'm just gonna take off the top tray here and it looks like we're getting great germination. So as you can see right here, these are a lot of the, it's either the seed holes or seeds that haven't germinated well. So what we're gonna do, so I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna wipe this onto my floor so that I can just come through uh, whenever we get done watering for the day, what we'll do, or for the morning rather, as we come through and we vacuum. So I just knocked that onto the floor and I'll vacuum that up here in just a minute so that that doesn't end up back in the product and potentially causes issues down the line with some kind of decay or rotting. All right, so everything is looking super happy, honestly. So we are beginning to get a lot of roots. I noticed this last night, so I added a little bit of water down here just to make sure that these roots don't dry out because if you don't put any water down here, these roots will start to brown and it'll potentially affect the health of your crop. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some water added to these right now. So I'm gonna do the same thing where I give it a light watering. I don't wanna go too crazy. Now because amaranth is one of those crops that doesn't love too much water, it likes to walk a line, uh, kind of like a fine line of a little bit of water, but not too much. And I'm gonna add some water to the bottom there. And that is basically it. So I've had my tray like this for the past four days. What I'm gonna do today is I'm actually gonna flip this over and just leave this like this. The reason I'm doing this is so that these can begin to grow upwards. If you look really close, you can see that they're kind of bent in half a little bit. And what's happening is they're pushing up against that tray right now and getting rid of those seed holes. I've done that well enough. So what I'm gonna do is reverse it and just let them kind of stand up at this point now. So I'm just gonna do this. Oh, I'm gonna hit it real quick with this very light hydrogen peroxide spray just cause this is very susceptible to damping off. And then put this like this and let's get it back on the shelf. So what I will do is I will come out tonight. Uh, I'm gonna double check everything on it, do the same thing, adding some water to the top and to the bottom if it needs it. And then I will see you guys tomorrow. All right, so we are on day five of the Red Garnet Amaranth Grow. So let's take a peek at how everything is looking. So remember yesterday we flipped this dome into the blackout state. And the reason we do that is so that we can stretch the product to make it a little bit taller, which makes it e easier for harvesting. So honestly, everything is looking really, really happy. Uh, everything's looking great. The medium looks like it's in great condition t still. It's not overly wet. I'm not seeing any signs of disease anywhere or anything that looks sad. So everything's looking awesome. There are a few seed holes still stuck. You can see whenever I rub my finger through these little seed holes that come. So there are still a few seed holes and uh, amaranth that haven't dug down into the medium perfectly yet, but that is all right. We will get that figured out. So let's take a look at our roots. Our roots are getting very long and actually a little bit dry. So we need to get some water into there to make sure these guys do not dry out. So what I'm gonna do now is just give this a slight mist. I actually might, I believe I'm gonna add a little bit of nutrient to the bottom of this since these roots are getting so big and the crop is starting to get taller. I'm gonna do a little bit of the ocean solution nutrient into there. Um, that way I can just help with the growth a little bit. I think I'm gonna do one more day of blackout just so that we can get these guys just a tiny, tiny bit taller uh, before we introduce them to, into the light because usually what happens is once we introduce amaranth into the light, they stay about that height. All right, so I got half a cup of our nutrient solution, ocean solution. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna begin bottom watering this tray. So all I've gotta do is I've gotta lift this up and then I just pour that. So it's not a whole lot of water, but it's gonna be enough just for these roots to kind of get a little bit. Uh, you don't wanna over water while it's still in blackout because it's gonna spike the humidity and it just could, could, it could potentially cause issues uh, with pathogens and things. You can cause rot if you add too much water or anything like that. So just a little bit of water would go a long way. And again, we're just gonna get this back into the blackout. All right, so that is it for day five. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come out tonight. I'm gonna check the bottom, see if it needs more water, check the top, see if I need to mist it again. But that is really it, so I'll see you guys tomorrow. 
All right, so we are on day six of this red garnet amaranth grow, and today should be the day that we remove the black out from the top of this, but let's go ahead and take a peek here. All right, so let's pull up this top dome, and everything is looking really, really, really good. Honestly, I am very happy with this growth. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this one out. You can see that uh, one of the red amaranths got pulled up into the canopy. I'm just gonna pull this out because that's just gonna end up decaying in the canopy if I don't. It looks like there's just one right here as well. One right here as well. And that's really about it. I think, is that guy one of them? All right, bam. So we had three little stragglers. That's really not bad at all. Honestly, this growth is looking really, really great. We can see so I am noticing a slight browning of the roots. Now this is something we have to be really careful with with amaranth, is that it is very susceptible to disease, mainly dampen off because of cold temperature or humidity. So this medium could be retaining water a little bit too well. Uh, I noticed that I added a little bit of nutrients yesterday and that's probably not the best call because you can see here we still have a lot of that left over. And what you really want to do with amaranth is you want it to be able to dry out just a little bit because it does not love being overwatered. Um, but other than that, the crop is looking super healthy on the top. So hopefully what we'll be able to do is just kind of bypass uh, whatever's going on with the roots and hopefully get a strong enough grow over the next probably five, six days that that's not gonna become an issue in time. So we'll just keep an eye on that. Uh, yesterday, I thought it was drying out a little bit. Uh, taking a closer look at it today, I could see that it's the potential start of some kind of pathogen spreading in the roots, but we are good because the crop is looking healthy. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, the canopy looks good, so I'm not gonna be watering the top anymore. The uh, blackout dome or tray is coming off for good today. So we're definitely gonna introduce this into the light. And since this has a tiny bit of water already with it, what I'm gonna do is add just a tiny, tiny bit more of fresh water to it. And again, this is uh, the ocean solution. So we're now bottom watering with nutrients. And we started that yesterday as well. So I'm doing less than half of a cup. So I'm not adding very much water at all. So I'm just gonna kind of splash that in. You can see that it just kind of filled up that. I mean, there's not a whole lot of water. It's really not even filling up in all places. And that's what I want right now because amaranth can be very susceptible to overwatering, like I stated. So that is it for right now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this beautiful crop and I'm gonna slide it into our lights. All right, so now that it's back on the shelf, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come out tonight, I'm gonna check, see if it needs more water, check on the growth, check on the roots, make sure everything's looking happy and healthy, and I will see you guys tomorrow. All right, so we are on day seven for our red garnet amaranth. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this pulled off the shelf and we're gonna see how this looks now that's been in the light for a day. So honestly, the coloration is very, very beautiful. Everything looks quite even. There is a little bit of a slow, uh, like the cotyledons haven't really opened right here in this little section along this side, but the majority of everything else has done a great job of opening up and uh, there are very few seed holes. So let's see how much of that water it was able to drink last night. So it was able to drink most of that water and these roots are still just doing that slight tan color that I don't love. Like you really want white, white roots. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of hydrogen peroxide on these roots. And the cool thing is since this is hydroponic and there's no dirt or anything, I could literally just kind of lift this straight up just to spray these roots very lightly really quick. So what this is, is it's just uh, two tablespoons of hydrogen peroxide in one liter of water. So it's a very, very light antifungal um, and it's just hydrogen peroxide. So it's going to do no harm. Um, so everything's looking good. I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit of water added to this. Again, since we're so early in the growth and amaranth does not love water, we're only gonna do three quarters of a cup. And again, this is the nutrient solution, ocean solution. So it is getting nutrients at this point. So the growth is honestly looking really, really great. I think three quarters of a cup is gonna be perfect. So I'm gonna take this now and I'm just gonna stick it straight back onto our shelf. So that is it for right now. I will come out tonight, do the exact same thing, and then I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, so today is day eight of our red amaranth grow. So let's get it pulled off the shelf and see how it is looking. So right off the bat, I noticed that everything is looking a lot better than it did yesterday. We had a lot of seed holes yesterday and we've shed most of those off and there are very few little, you can kind of see the seed holes right here. There are very few remaining. So honestly, this is doing pretty great. I'm not seeing any signs of disease. 
or anything that looks to be of concern to me. Let's take a peek at our roots. Again, they're not as super white and healthy as I'd like them to be, but they are still very healthy looking. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to, again, give these roots a slight spray with some very, very mild hydrogen peroxide mix. And let's get a little bit of water added. So I'm just doing a hair under one cup of water. And that seems to be sufficient. So these should be ready for harvest, I would say in about probably four more days. So let's get this put on the shelf and I will check in with you guys tomorrow. All right, so we are on day nine of our Red Garnet Amaranth Grow and everything seems to be looking really good. Let's take a peek here. Awesome, yeah, I mean, this whole crop is looking really nice. I'm not seeing any signs of dampen off. I'm not seeing any signs of any pathogen. There's only very, very few seed holes remaining. I'd say about 1% or less of these seed holes are still on there. And there's such tiny seed holes that I'm not even really worried about them being mixed into the product. Uh, there's something that you'll just easily chew and not even notice that they're there. So everything is looking really, really, really great. Let's take a peek at our roots. How is our root health doing? So our root health is actually staying the same, which is good. We don't want it to get worse because we noticed a little bit of yellowing right here on this side, uh, which was potentially the start of some kind of pathogen. Uh, so I'm not seeing it get any worse. And actually it looks like it's doing really quite well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do the same thing I've been doing the other days, which is quickly hit this with the hydrogen peroxide. I don't even know that that's a proper technique for how to control that kind of stuff. I just figure, why not try it at the source? All right, and then I'm going to take just over a cup of water since I took a peek here and I mean, it's absorbed all this water out of this tray really quite nicely. So I'm gonna up it just a little bit up to just a hair over one cup. So that should be perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and set this on the shelf again and I'm gonna reverse it because it looks like one side's getting a little bit more water than the other. It's because our trailer sits a little bit like this and I haven't leveled it out. I need to go do that, but that'll be dealt with. So anyways, uh, that is it for today. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come out tonight. I'm going to double check the water, spray the roots again, give it some more water, and then I will see you guys tomorrow and we should be harvesting in about three days. All right, so we are on day 10 of our red garnet amaranth grow. So let's take a peek. Bum, ba, ba. So everything is looking great. Honestly, I'm not seeing any signs of disease, no sign of dampen off. And the crop is looking nice and beautiful. It's very, very pink and very pretty, which I love about this crop. So everything's looking great. What I'm gonna do is I'm kind of looking at the medium and peeking through the side right here, you can kind of see how the medium is still wet. So that tells me that I probably don't need to be adding too much water uh, because this probably still has a good amount of water in it. Yep. So it looks like we slightly overwatered last night. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna leave this water in there. I'm not gonna be adding any more water. So anytime you accidentally overwater, do not uh, add any more water. And something you can also do too is drain this water out and add in some fresh water too. Uh, it usually doesn't uh, help if you've let that water just kind of sit and stagnate for a while. Uh, but this is just fine. I know I did it last night and I just slightly overwatered. So it should be able to drink all this up by this evening. So I'm just gonna leave it. We're gonna put it back on the shelf. I'm gonna come out and check it this evening. And if it needs more water, I'll give it some. Otherwise, I'll just leave it alone. So I'll see you tomorrow. All right, so we are on day 11 for our Red Garnet Amaranth Hydroponic Grow. And the growth is looking pretty good. What I am noticing is it's kind of frozen at this point. Uh, it hasn't really grown too much in height over the past few days. So um, hopefully we begin to get a little bit more height out of this. I do notice that they are leaning quite a bit. So if you take a look, they're actually substantially taller than they appear to be because they are leaning over a good amount. But anyways, we'll try to grow this for probably about two, three more days and just try to get a little bit more height out of these. Hopefully we can, but everything's looking great. I'm gonna get some ocean solution added to this. So I'm gonna do just under a cup. Let's take a look and make sure. So they have drank all the water. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a full cup and that should be good. So I'm gonna put this back onto the shelf and then I will come out later this evening. I will give it another cup of water and then I will see you guys tomorrow. All right, so we are on day 12 of our Red Garnet Amaranth Grow. So let's get this pulled off of the shelf here and let's take a peek. 
So honestly, all this growth is looking really, really nice. And it's looking quite beautiful. Now I'm still not yet seeing any true leaves. So I think we're gonna let this go just a little bit longer so that we can hopefully get some true leaves on this. So maybe another day or two tops and then we will be harvesting this. So what I'm gonna do is, let's go, I guess let's take a peek at the roots real quick and I can show you those. So the roots are looking pretty good. They are beginning to yellow, which tells me there's some kind of something going on with the roots. Uh, this is nothing to really be worried about though since we're so close to the end, uh, to the end here with this grow. That's kind of the perk of microgreens. If you do see some kind of pathogen or something happening really late in the process, it's really not too much of a issue, especially at the roots because uh, microgreens don't take very long to grow at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this, I gave it just under a cup of water. I'm gonna take my hydrogen peroxide mix here. And I'm just gonna spray the roots a little bit, keep those happy and healthy. Set that back down. And this is gonna go back on the shelf. I'm gonna come out tonight, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. And then hopefully in the next day or two, we can actually harvest these uh, and we'll see how much weight we get. All right, so we are on day 13 of this red garnet amaranth grow. So let's pull it off the shelf and take a peek here. All right, so everything's looking good and it looks like we've got a random sunflower seed hole in there. It's fun what happens inside of a grow space. All right, so everything's looking good. It's staying about the same height. It hasn't really risen too much, but the cool thing is we are beginning to get some true leaves. So that is super honestly exciting which tells me one more day. Yeah, I'm gonna let this go for one more day because those true leaves are just now beginning to come out. And this thing is actually really pretty once those true leaves do develop and come into it. So I'm gonna try and encourage that just a little bit more. So same thing, I'm gonna check our roots here in just a moment. I'm gonna give it just a little bit of water. Let's check out these roots real fast. All right, so it is drinking up the one cup of water fully every single night now. I mean, there's a tiny bit of dripping, but for the most part, it's doing it. And the roots look like they're still doing pretty good, so that is a good sign. All right, so that is it for today. Hopefully these true leaves are bigger by tomorrow. We will see. I'm going to get this slid back onto the shelf. I will come out tonight. I will add some more water to it. And then I will see you guys tomorrow when we can hopefully harvest this. So we are on day 14 of a red garnet amaranth hydroponic grow. And I am excited because today is harvest day. So everything is looking quite beautiful. I'm very happy with this crop. The growth is pretty dang exceptional. And we're just now starting to see true leaves, which means this is time to get this harvested. If you can see, it's kind of small. There is a true leaf in there. All right, so what we need to do now is we need to get this harvested. So I've got everything prepped for my harvesting station. So what I'm gonna need is I got a knife, very sharp. So that's gonna be awesome to glide right through that. And actually this is one of the uh, new knives that we have. We usually use those little orange ones. I actually really like this knife because it has a nice rubber grip on it. So, and it came super sharp versus our orange ones, which came kind of dull. So anyways, uh, we also need a scale and a bowl to harvest into. So I've got that and that's already zeroed out. And I'm going to put this, uh, the harvested amaranth inside these 32 ounce wide mouth mason jars, uh, just cause I don't want to use a plastic baggie on it. And I've got these mason jars just laying around, so may as well use them. I also keep a knife with their, uh, towel with me. This is not a knife. <laughs> towel with me to kind of wipe up if I need it. So let's go ahead and get to harvesting. What I'm gonna do is, my hands have been cleaned. I'm just gonna kind of pinch a corner here. We need to go low, but not so low that we uh, get some of the medium in there. So you just wanna kind of roll it into your hands and actually just check this out real quick. I mean, look at the coloration on that. Those are just stunning, aren't they? They taste like beets, which is really awesome. All right, so now we just start kind of digging our way into this tray. It's a little awkward because it's pretty full around the edges, so you just kind of got to work your way into the tray, and then once you get in there, then we can start actually moving. You can see how quickly... God, we haven't even sharpened this knife. So we bought this knife like this, and it's actually just grazing right through this. I'm super impressed with this. Wow. It's looking good. Looking so good. I mean, just look at this. 
Like, does that not just make you happy? Look how freaking gorgeous it is. All right, it's gonna take me forever to harvest at this rate. I wanna stop and look at everything. So our grow medium looks like it did well. There's some kind of, um, I assume maybe like a black algae or something kind of happening down there. That is all right though, we got here and it did not affect our crop negatively at all. Because all this looks super happy. I'm not seeing any signs of dampen off. And the product just looks beautiful. I am like silly impressed with this knife right now. Like really, really impressed with this knife. I think it's because we've just been kind of, those orange knives work great. They're recommended to us by another farmer, but man, honestly, this thing is just like buttery smooth through this crop. I mean, I feel like I could take this whole tray in like one good swoop with this knife. So right here, I harvested a little bit low and you can see how I got some of those seed holes from it. So what I'm gonna do is, it's kind of a weird technique. I'm just gonna kind of pinch this, drop all this into there. I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna take this knife. I'm just kind of, oh God, it's sharp enough to do it. I love this knife. Okay, I have a new favorite knife. This is officially my new favorite knife. Um, so I just kind of cut off that where we harvested too low. I just don't want to mix that in. So it looked very moist and I don't like moist stuff being mixed in with our greens or reds rather now. So the aroma that these put off is awesome. That's what I love about microgreens. It's just like a whole sensory experience growing them. I mean, visually, they're just incredibly beautiful. Taste-wise, they're incredible. They're just like nothing you've ever tasted before. Nutrition-wise, they're incredible. And aroma-wise, they're incredible. So it's kind of hard to be disappointed with microgreens. So bam. All right, let me set a little bit aside for a taste test real quick. Do, 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 do. So you can see we do have a few little seed holes. Let me try to find some and I'll pick them up here. We'll do it right here. So you see these little tan spots on the top. So those are the little seed holes, but those aren't bad because honestly, they're so incredibly tiny that they just kind of disappear into your mouth anyway. You wanna try some? Mm, 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 mm. Mm. God, I've missed that. We haven't had red garnet in mm -hmm. over a month now. We took a break to kind of, you know, chill out a little bit, but I miss growing this. Tastes really good. So I'm super excited. We got 147 grams. We probably just ate a little bit of that. So let's assume like 148 grams. I didn't look at it before we started eating it. 149. 149, 149. Let's 150. I say 150. So 150 grams from 15 grams of seed, that's actually pretty awesome. So we've uh, exponentially grown from the amount of seed. You can see how microgreens too, like a tiny amount of seeds can actually turn into a tremendous amount of product. And it kind of depends on the seed variation for it though to do that. So I'm very happy with this. I'm gonna take my clean uh, towel and just wipe off my knife. I just like to do that. If you leave stuff on there for too long, it'll get kind of rusty and I just don't like to do that. So I'm super happy. We've got 150 grams out of this harvest. It looks stunning. This was all hydroponically grown. The medium looks good. Let's take a peek at our roots just out of curiosity. So they were beginning to do that tan browning, but the crop looks super happy, so I'm okay with that. And something that I like about this grow medium too, so a lot of people ask, what do we do with our grow medium after we have grown? Uh, we always toss it out into our compost. We don't reuse our grow mediums because the likelihood of a pathogen being there is just way too high. Even after we've composted it, people ask, you know, do you take it from your compost and put it back into your grow space? No, we don't. Uh, we just prefer to use that on our personal garden. And inside here, it's just, we don't like to increase any kind of chance of pathogens. So nothing ever really comes back in here that's been uh, composted because it's uh, it takes a process to make sure there's no pathogens. So taking a peek at this grow medium, what I love about this is it's hemp. So it actually does, I mean, break apart very easily and it does compost quite well. That's something that I've uh, noticed about it versus a lot of the other grow mediums. Like I've still got BioStrate still sitting in our compost that hasn't hardly broken down at all. And uh, what I'm frustrated about is they say it's compostable, but it's only compostable in an industrial setting. I've noticed that like hemp, jute, and things like that uh, seem to actually break down a lot quicker, which is why I've been moving towards these. And it's honestly worked really great. That was one of the strongest grows 
uh, that we've had with amaranth on a hydroponic medium. So I'm really, really happy with it. Um, so enough about that. Let's get this all packaged up here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna clean off my hands real quick, find a good clean part of this towel. Get any residue off of there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my little mason jar here. I'm just gonna start doop, feeding it right into there. And I mean, just look how beautiful that is. I'm just like so happy with this right now. Maybe just, you gotta just appreciate what you've done every now and then. Gotta take a step back and be like, I did good. I'm being a little delicate not to like shove this into the jar. Goodness, this is gorgeous. Gorgeous, darling. And just look at that. Just look at it. Would you just look at it? All right, so that's about it for this jar. Ooh, baby. Can't wait to make some salads. Put this on my pizzas. Put it on basically everything we do. Smoothies. Smoothies, we put them in our smoothies. As right, so you can see, I was able to fit about 70 grams into this one jar, which is pretty great. I mean, there's a little bit of room down at the bottom, but I'm not gonna try to squish this down in there. There's no sense. I got two jars. Let's not, let's not push it. So these jars are a little bit harder to get the amaranth out of, especially for my big hands. Mandy's little hands are easier to get in there. My hands were made for it. <laughs> Our hands were made for it. All right, so that is it. Anything little like this, I don't like to try to like, it's really hard to scoop this out of the bowl and I end up like squishing the product whenever I do that. So it's a little bit wasteful, but what I do is I just toss that over into that tray right there. I'm gonna eat that because I don't want that to go to waste. So let's get our lids onto here. Bam. Mm, I just wanna keep snacking on it. It's got like a I don't know how to describe it. Um, I saw somebody describe it as like a roasted beets flavor. Mm -hmm. I can kind of see that. It's so funny. I say they taste like red. I don't know why. <laughs> to me, that's what it just, I, it tastes like the color red. A lot of the uh, red crops have a very similar taste. So I say it tastes like red, which I really enjoy. I like the, I like the taste of red. Let me just say that. So that is it for today. We got an awesome harvest. I'm really, really happy with this. This produce is gonna go a long way. We're gonna use it in our smoothies on top of basically everything we do. It's just an incredibly beautiful garnish to throw on top of meals. And it's incredibly tasteful to throw this into your smoothies and things like that. It really does add a lot of flavor and they're packed with a ton of nutrients. So tons of great things that happened here. Again, this was a full walkthrough on how to grow hydroponically. Uh, so I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. If you dislike it, give us a thumbs down. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the section below and we will do our best to get those answered for you as soon as we possibly can. And if you'd like to as well, please subscribe. We do lots more experiments, walkthroughs, I mean, you name it. We're trying to just experiment with a whole bunch. We're gonna have a website that's gonna act as a hub for uh, all free information on how to grow microgreens. And I'm missing some things. If you would like to, our Instagram and our Facebook are both at On The Grow Farms. Thank you so much. Have a great day and keep on growing.